Hi, I'm Milton. And I'm Bert. Welcome to Wild Africa Experience. And uh, thank you so much for liking and uh, for those who have been subscribing our page. And uh, you're doing a great job. And uh, yeah, so don't forget to like if you haven't subscribed. Uh, do subscribe. So Bert, today, what are we going to talk about? Um, well, yeah, we've, for a change, we thought it would be amazing if we go off the beaten track a little bit, you know, talk about the smaller things, mm -hmm. see how our ecological system would fit together. I think, uh, I think that would be uh, quite interesting for our viewers, don't mm -hmm. you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know, what, what, what do you suggest? Well, let's, uh, maybe, let's, let's talk about vouchers yeah. in general. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, that, that's quite an interesting topic, eh? Indeed. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a, a personal liking for vouchers. Um, I, I know they've had a, a bad reputation as well mm. because of being scavengers and they go for the carry-on and for the eyes mm. and yeah. So well, what can we dish out today on vouchers? <laughs> well, uh, vouchers, it is uh, generally the very important uh, um, birds to have in general. Mm. Uh, because remember last uh, on our last on our previous episode we talked about hyenas being uh, nature sanitary engineers clearing up on a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, vouchers they do as well because um, there are some there are some things or there are some areas which they can go where other animals they can't reach mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. if there's um, uh, is if there's an animal which is right in the island, sometimes hyenas may not be able to, to, to get there. Mm. So vouchers, they can be there, all right. So um, one amazing thing is um, the, the more, the, the, generally there are different uh, species, different types of vouchers. Yes. We talk of uh, lappet first voucher, we talk one of, of white, white uh, back voucher, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about uh, um, griffin, we talk about um, uh, Egyptian voucher, you talk, quite a lot cap vouchers the hooded vouchers, the hooded vouchers all and all those so um in in a, in a in a in a community you know for for the birds uh when they are on a carcass mm. uh, the more gregarious they are the more plenty in a group the more gregarious they are mm -hmm. the more they dominate on a carcass mm. but they because of specialization you'd find that um the the the, the one with the strongest beak that is the lappet first your favorite mm. It's the one that breaks first because it would have a very strong jaw. Mm -hmm. And then and then the rest of them they will come in. All right. So it's it's, it's very interesting. That's that's pretty interesting because you, you find that out of all the how gregarious say the, the white backed vultures are, mm -hmm. you find them on carcasses like that. Once the, the, the if there is no animal that has managed to open the carcass, the, 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 your, your uh, lappet face normally gets there first. And there are quite a few, or sometimes they come in fairly big numbers, mm. and, and they are just in charge of opening it up. And what are they mainly eating? Are they into uh, tendons? or um, Because you find that what I've noticed that they are all into different parts of, of the, the meat, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's right. Because uh, you know, remember, like lapid first voucher being strong and uh, being able to break the you know the jaws, being able to break the big tendons, mm. they're able to eat that. Mm. But uh, I've realized, I've heard that the, um, the there's a highest uh, the, there's a voucher which is recorded to get about two kilogram, two point five kilogram of meat in mm. a minute wow. as they as they got all on the on the carcass wow, wow. so they're very fast when they're trying to feed you know mm. because there is a lot of uh, competition but um one great thing is um with all those birds when when there is a when there is a carcass it's not only vouchers uh if you heard that the the first bird to arrive at a carcass that is um um what do you call butler eagle mm, it's yeah. it's it, but it can go up to 200 kilometers mm -hmm. scavenging and then it gets there first and then uh, vultures they come in and you also get um, uh, the marabou stalk, the marabou, you also yeah. get um, southern pearl chanting gosh mm -hmm. you also get crows, some they specialize, some they get the eyes, mm -hmm. some they get the, you know, a bit of things, they all specialize in feeding on, on mm -hmm. different things, mm -hmm. on, a, on a carcass, yeah. which, is, um, which is a great thing. But one thing I like is they take time. They mm. do time sharing. Wow. Yeah. So we're talking about some a really good symbiotic relationship here. Absolutely. Yeah. So they can get together and they should be able to to get along and 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 share time quite well and and also eat parts that they don't need to. Uh, 
compete over. So there, there's break, pretty much no competition there. Among them, yes. Wow, wow. Yeah. But ecologically, that makes them very important because you find that they, uh, besides the, the cleaning up, they're getting rid of diseases as mm, well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and um, I, I suppose vultures, pretty much like any scavenger, are a sign of a good environment. Mm, yeah, mm. because they... They are in charge of making sure that um, the, the nutrients are dispersed evenly. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So it's something that you um, that, that I always find quite interesting with with the, the birds of prey. Eh? Okay. Yeah. Right. So we're gonna take um, we're gonna take a short break and uh, stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. All right. Right. Welcome back to our Africa Experience. So we still on vouchers. Yes. Um, but have you, have, you, have you realized that most of these vouchers, they lack the feathers on, on the head, especially mm -hmm. the lappet first voucher. And so I, I would like to believe as well because they, 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 they have to go inside the body mm -hmm. of, uh, of a carcass. Mm -hmm. So if, if it has feathers all the way up to the head, mm -hmm. um, there is a tendency of uh, getting um, the, some kind of infections and all those. All so right. by being open or bare, mm -hmm. it helps a lot. Right. And, and, and in extremely hot temperatures as well, in mm -hmm. areas sometimes they get them in a mid desert, um, they can also still dispatch uh, the heat um, through the, the, the bare um, area where they, they, they aren't uh, feathers. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so that's why you see. And then, uh, we, we, but of course, when they are flying, uh, there can be different temperatures mm -hmm. uh, in different areas where they, they, they reach. Um, the, the head will be held a little bit backwards in, mm -hmm. and then there is a little ring, which you call the, 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 rust, um, the rough, it's like a scuff, mm -hmm. and that protects uh, the neck um, from, from uh, certain temperatures. When, when they when they when they fly. Oh wow, that's yeah. that's pretty so, interesting. Right? So it's very interesting. And um, uh, tell me about um, have you experienced um, uh, nesting on, on on vouchers? Because I know um, some of the vouchers they do prefer top part of the tree because mm. the wingspan they can't go a little bit in, so they go right on top oh, wow, where yeah. they use twigs yeah. and other things. Mm. But because of the terrain mm -hmm. and the and the area they prefer, they have to they, they, certainly they they, they they have to have different nesting behaviors. Mm. Well, I remember getting lost in the Serengeti one day and then bah, I bump into a, a nest of uh, lapid faced vultures and right. it was so bad because I couldn't find my way back to camp. Um, yeah, we, we were just following these herds of wildebeest and before you knew it, it was there. But uh, I've been lucky as well to be in places like the Drakensberg where they've got the, the Cape vultures. Mm. And they're nesting right on the cliffs of the mm, mountain. Right. And um, it, it, it's it's quite interesting because obviously birds they they always have that tendency of um, having this concentrated mm. urea mm. staining the rocks okay. and on their legs as well to avoid sunscreen, uh, to avoid getting burnt. I mean, urodrosis. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. they they pee and urinate on their legs at mm. the same time. But we've been right to the top where we can see them from the top with binoculars and you see that they are right on the edge mm. which is uh, i'm sure it's for safety and they've got nests and or eggs around that area mm. and the little chicks normally when they hatch they're so tiny something so interesting and um they're quite en endangered they eh? mm. most of these yeah. uh, species yeah. which mm. is which is something that you always find uh, pretty interesting mm. that uh, they are very well protected Unfortunately, we don't see them around close to our cities anymore because mm. obviously of uh, mm. uh, the myths that go around That's right. things like vultures mm. and, and, and hyenas mm. and those kind of things. But yeah, we've been lucky. I've also seen the bearded vultures uh, close to the Sentinel um, Peak mm -hmm. on the Berg as well. Mm -hmm. um, I went there the one time with a couple of friends of mine mm -hmm. from, from Hungary. Um, and and we, we had such an amazing time. First time seeing a bearded vulture as well, mm. highly endangered. And they always on the peak or on the edge of the mm. mountains, which mm. is something that uh, yeah, quite so, interesting. So like what uh, Bert has said, there is a tendency of um, uh, some of those chicks to die and uh, some of the eggs to fall mm. due to competition or as they all roost together. Mm -hmm. and there can be some kind of... Uh, intraspecific competition, mm. competition among the family groups, mm. and that will eventually make uh, one of the eggs to fall or the chicks to die due to siblicide, mm. uh, um, um, canism. So it makes the it, it makes such a, a breed or, or, or of, of vouchers to become endangered, like what you said. Mm. And um, a, a great thing, like um, they've got different techniques when they're feeding. Mm. I've, I've, I've seen um, a, a, a clip 
um, of um, Egyptian voucher, mm -hmm. picking up a, a small a, a rock, mm -hmm. you know, throwing it on the on, on an ostrich egg, just mm -hmm. trying to you know to break it so that it can get the contents. Wow. It's, it's 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 such a great thing for for them to to be able to 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 do such a thing like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I suppose it's adaptation, eh? Absolutely. Yeah. But you, I know you've specialized in birds a yeah. lot when you mm -hmm. were in, in on the South African side, right? And, yeah. And I've I've always um, wanted to. To, to venture in that as well and because mm -hmm. I find it it's 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 highly um, it's very good especially when you're traveling in places like Botswana mm -hmm. where you get a lot of donkeys on the side mm -hmm. of the road and all these vouchers just lying there mm. and they're just tearing apart the whole thing yeah. which, is, which is something that you always find interesting but ecologically in the case that um, you don't find vouchers I've also found uh, some other little things like uh, the, the, the larvae mm -hmm. of uh, the, the, the moth that just, you know, get into under the skin, mm. uh, the, the, the blow flies, and then they start mm. laying eggs and the larvae will just disintegrate the whole carcass. Mm -hmm. and, and theoretically, they talk about how they can literally just disintegrate the whole carcass within a week mm. on, a, on a nice warm summer's day you know mm, mm. something that you always find uh, pretty impressive uh, in absolutely, the wild eh? that, absolutely. you know the ecology just just works in mysterious ways mm, yeah mm. yeah you know talking about uh, uh, ecology just everything just uh, being able to you know help uh, each other you know voucher feeding and then something breeding like what you've said mm. you know it's it's just great thing yeah. um um to to see those are uh, such a great thing interactions and and, and all those yeah and um yeah coming uh, coming back to to, to the eggs mm. these beds now they will tend to have different colorations mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, uh bird and nets and usually um the the eggs of birds they mm. they, they, they are made by um a um, calcium carbonate yes. right that that is more general white mm. and the more they become in they, they are in a shed mm. they become they become white mm. right mm -hmm. and then and a later stage you can get some which are brown some which are blue mm -hmm. and all those are defense mechanisms and some some of them is just there to to to, to protect uh, uh, the nest side mm. and at the same time we have them in different shapes like the vouchers um, they are in different form all right, so that mm -hmm. it doesn't go over the rock easily, mm -hmm. and uh, getting other birds that nest on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. like your lapwings and um, uh, causes and all those, mm -hmm. um, the, the the eggs are quite cryptic to mm -hmm. the ground mm -hmm. because they're so colored. They've got different colors that mm -hmm. matches the ground, which is quite uh, quite a great thing. But uh, in in the, in the smaller sense, uh, do you think vultures can can get into trouble with other like parasitic birds? Um, because the reason why obviously some birds would have their eggs changing color is also because parasitic birds as much as they try they probably won't be able to match mm. the, 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 color the color changes, the color changes yeah, yeah. even though some cuckoos I hear that like they're perfect when it comes to going with the color you mm. know like uh, mm. from blue and to red, red and then before and they hatch so mm. that uh, they distract the, the mm. The, the other the opposition the the breeder it's parasitism it's, it's, it's something it's, it's, it's something interesting always find quite interesting but um, I suppose we'll talk about it at some point we're gonna continue with the discussion of vouchers and we'll come back shortly stay tuned all right welcome back to wild Africa experience uh, we're still on the voucher talk very interesting you know uh, on my game driving experience, I've been very lucky to, you know, I've been under the wings of, of, of uh, uh, the grandmaster of birding, actually. So um, on, on game drives, you find that sometimes you get very lucky, you, you get vultures perched on a, on a tree, you know, mm -hmm. early in the morning. Because I know they, they, they've got a hard time just trying to flap their wings. They're mm. pretty big animals, so they wait for the thermals to go up, but sometimes you see them different uh, species and then you start looking around and before you know it bah, there's a kill under a tree mm. where the lions maybe have pulled it to one side and the vultures are just waiting mm. or you're driving in at a distance you just see them catching the thermals and and then you start thinking okay let me just head in that direction because mm. these folks have got really good eyesight mm. so uh, normally on a walking safari how do you um, how important are vultures to you well, thanks, Bert. Um, they're, they're very important um, in, in the sense that 
uh, their eyesight is great. Yes. You know, from, from that great distance, they do possess what you call a fovea that will help with um, uh, the, 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 the monocular and the binocular vision for mm -hmm. them to see in a distance and be able to pick mm -hmm. right what's on the ground. Wow. And um, so when you're walking, you would have that, you know, like um, I won't have a roof of a vehicle where it's obstruct me to see what's above me. Mm -hmm. And then I've got, I can check all around me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, many a times, if I see them, right from a distance i would start to check in that in that area mm. and um at one time when i was walking i saw plenty i would say maybe over 100 vouchers mm. on a roost on a tree and then some of them they were like in a smaller tree and then i knew exactly that the animal which is around here it should be a big animal mm -hmm. and uh, they wouldn't be there if it was an impala impala mm. would have gone already with um probably uh, some other small, some other scavengers, small scavengers. Uh, and then I saw there was a, a huge elephant which was dead, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I when I when I, I looked, I, literally I was about um, twenty meters away. I looked with my binoculars and I saw the whole pride, you know. There were about fifteen of them. I counted, and the youngs, the cubs, they were inside the uh, the body of an elephant. Wow. They were literally wow. red, covered in, in blood. That right. So they were just waiting for their time. And mm -hmm. you know, um, on an elephant kill, wow. it takes kind of a long time for, for, for lions to live there. Mm. So so then um, it's it's very important by 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 observing them you, you have to select your route because I need my escape route mm -hmm. and remember that sometimes some of them as well will be going to drink water after they have, they have eaten something mm -hmm. or some they will be coming from the water. So I have to look for a best way of approaching wow. as just it's it's an indication mm -hmm. that it has been brought in by by vouchers. So wow. they're very important yeah. when you're doing a walking safari. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk of uh, the bird's eye view. You know, mm. vultures are, um, in general, birds are, have got an amazing eyesight because mm. they say to see at least five times better than human beings mm. to the extent that the brain is actually smaller than the eye. And the eyes of vultures in particular are more rigid because they are, mm. they are more oval or oblong to, to allow so that they are rigid so mm. that they can see, which mm. allows their head to turn almost 270 degrees mm. so that they can look around. And uh, when we're talking of good eyesight, humans have got coloration and their, their coloration is way better to the extent that some of these species can actually de de um, uh, detect um, UV rays, ultraviolet rays, which are reflected by urine so that they can, uh, they can know the trails of little species or what's been happening around. Mm. Most of these species, before they die, some of them urinate and then they pick up this big urine uv ray and then before you know it they're like let's go and check it out this mm. must be where mm. it's happening mm. so theoretically the eye of a, of, of a vulture is is probably a formidable mm. uh, weapon in mm. terms of mm. Uh, mm. navigation mm. all right and also we, we were talking about the nictitating membrane the other day yes you know? yes the nictitating so membrane yeah, yeah because that's they're right. flying high distances they're flying high, so. yeah that's right so mm. so it closes up a bit and then uh, it acts like a, a google you know mm. Mm. and uh they still have a chance of 80 percent um uh seeing uh, what's what's it because just a little eyelid that closes, wow. uh, which which is uh, quite a great thing. Yeah. And it helps as well for the um, prevailing wind, mm. and there's always uh, the heat, you know, which is which is quite a great wow. thing. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, vouchers they're they're very very important, mm. and um, I, I like them being there. You know, they look very mean. Mm. They they they're not very. Uh, something where they say pretty but i say every bird is very pretty i'm sure um, their mother says that too absolutely <laughs> born, born beautiful <laughs> right so talking about uh, where they we can find them around zimbabwe um i've seen i've seen a lot in victoria falls area manapools area we also get some other species mm. um we can get in almost in every park that has a great activity when it mm. comes to uh, killing um we, we can still get them and yeah. um yeah, I've so, seen a lot in Botswana, mm -hmm. a lot of vultures mm -hmm. in Botswana, maybe mm -hmm. because of the humidity and there's quite a lot of animals there that Donkeys seem and to be hit by vehicles and mm -hmm. unfortunately and then they're all over the place. Eh? So I've, I've seen uh, when I was participating with the, with the, on, on the anti-poaching crew in some other park um, uh, and uh, doing some camp counting. Uh, they, they, there's been some uh, vouchers following up in helicopter because mm -hmm. they, they were anticipating a kill. Some with someone just, just following up. They try their luck mm -hmm. and they spend a long time just searching. And within a few hours or a day when an animal is killed, 
they will be they will be there you know because they spend long time and some sometimes because of their heights they've they can reach we might not be even picked up there they are there all times mm -hmm. section all right so very interesting it's, eh? it's very interesting yeah but uh, it's very important for people to know that when you see vultures in areas do not be scared they don't belong to anyone mm. they're just there and it's a sign of somehow a healthy environment in your area that wildlife is dying mm. and it's the circle of life so do not hit them with rocks or hit them with your car Ex uh, exercise extreme caution when you're mm. driving because mm. sometimes if a, a, a some animal is hit by a car and they jump onto the road just slow down and make sure they somehow fly away or mm. go around them mm. do not hit them we need them in our environment especially in our ecosystem mm. they play a very important role some they'll be too young to react so just always ex exercise extreme caution yes all right so that was our episode on vultures um, and hopefully we'll see you next time on Wild Africa Experience. Thank you so much. Do not forget to like and subscribe. And for those who have subscribed, I hope we are delivering quite a good show and let's make our wildlife experience movement bigger. Mm -hmm.